Happy Monday to you. Hope you're doing well. I had a client reach out to me with a very serious incident that occurred, and it's one in which her dog got up on her kitchen counter. Yeah, how many of you have had that happen? And her dog happened to snatch down a big box, a bag of chocolate. Now again, this time of year, especially with Halloween just being around the corner, there's a lot of candy lying around. Maybe not in your household, definitely in my household. In fact, it's around here all the time. Uh, it's a bad thing, but you just have to work out harder, that's all. But nevertheless, of our kitchen counters is everything. Everything from candy to medications to harmful tape, anything, glue, so many things. How many people use their kitchen counters basically as a storage shelf? I know I do. We do it all the time. We lay things up there. And I've owned dogs that have gotten up on kitchen counters and snatched down things that were very harmful uh, to them. And just like the the viewer who wrote in the question, what I do about this, and her dog had to spend three days at a veterinary hospital and almost died. I've been there. I've had to treat my own dogs at my own veterinary hospital because we get complacent. We just do. And I'm no different. I get a little complacent. My dogs are so well trained. I love them to death. And I would never think that, huh, they take an interest in this little piece of candy right here. But by golly, they do. They love sweets and they love anything else that happens to be on your kitchen counter. So that being said, whether it's Halloween or, or any time of the year, it's something that we have to take care of and take care of right now. Now, here's the problem with my client. I don't know if I wrote that in the description or not. Her dog never gets on her kitchen counter when she's around. If she's in the kitchen, anyone's near the kitchen at all, anyone's even anywhere in the bottom floor of their two-story home, the dog doesn't get on the counter. But if they go upstairs, they go outside, or if they leave the home, the dog's on the kitchen counter. And this time it almost cost the dog's life because he got on the kitchen counter and once again snatched down a big old bag of chocolate and ate the whole darn thing. So what do you do about this and why is this going on? Well, first of all, the reason why it's going on is because the dogs learn safe versus dangerous. Yeah, they're smart animals. They, they make their whole, whole living. Everything that they learn in this world, they draw a comparison. A comparison. They do this. They get this feedback. We do the same thing. Did it come with a cost? Did it come with a benefit? You know, I wish the dog would now learn that getting on kitchen counters, snatching down a bag of chocolate just doesn't work out well for you. And they won't ever do that again. But no, that's not going to happen. The dog's going to get right back on the counter because it has no clue that that chocolate is what causes uh, very near demise. These animals are smart. This, this client, this, this uh, viewer, she's, she's walked in her kitchen before, caught her dog on the counter, and of course said, no, get off that darn thing, bad dog, all those things. And yeah, the dog got off, very, very smart animal. Oh, geez, okay, I'm off, <laughs> my bad. And next thing you know, they weren't in the room and something draws the dog up, some sort of motivation, something tempting. And sure enough, the dog puts his paws right on the kitchen counter, snatches it off. But then all of a sudden, the owner sees him, says no. Uh, so as you can see how, how this kind of moves along. Paws on counter when humans are around. Dangerous. But paws on counter when humans are not around. Yeah. Safe. Candy's all mine. They learned that. Oh, they learned that so fast. So what do you do about it? Well, there's all sorts of things you can do, but I'm telling you what. Here's a very simple solution. Right down here on this mat, you can probably see it only because it's got little waves on it because I haven't used mine in a while. This is known as a scat mat. Now, let me hold it up here. See it? Now you can't see me. You lie this on your counter, and it's got a little 9-volt battery that goes in it. Right there, a little 9-volt battery. You can set it on low, medium, or high. And it's got little electrode strips that run through this little plastic mat. Oh, my. Works like a champ. Now, you can turn that on, leave it, go about your business. Dog hops on counter. Oh, jeez. And suddenly, they come running up to you. They go, the counter got me. The counter got me. And you're sitting there going, yeah, those things are bad, man. I don't know if I'd be putting your paws on those things. They're, they're really bad. I, I suggest you kind of keep your paws off there. The only time they're ever safe is, uh, is when I'm around and I happen to, I can touch you, but you can't. Uh, so I just keep my little paws off that counter. If I were you, that's a smart thing to do. And they learn this because you're not around. You're not there to say no. You're not there to be any influence whatsoever. This is known as natural pairing. Natural. It'd be no different if I ran my hand across this countertop and all of a sudden something 
got me. And I went, oh, geez. I want to look at you guys and go, which one of you out there did that to me? Jane, that wasn't nice. No. What am I going to do naturally? Geez, what the heck got me? What, what's, what? what the heck is that on my counter? What got me? Natural pairing. Natural. We love it sometimes. It's great to teach your dog. You can take these scat mats. Oh my. I haven't used mine in a while. Again, why they got these little folded up wrinkles in them. Why? Because I don't need to because there are many, many dangerous things around my household. One of my sofas is dangerous. The other ones I don't really care about. But there's one, it's an only heirloom, goes back years and years and years and all that kind of stuff there. And we just figured, you know, maybe they should just stay off of that piece of furniture. So that piece of furniture became dangerous. When we had cats, the litter box became dangerous. Oh, you might not want to pluck stuff out of there. Certain objects became dangerous. And lo and behold, the Christmas tree. You bet, those ornaments, huh, for Captain, those are just like tons of of balls hang in there he he i don't know what he thought he just thought man i've died and gone to heaven because there's all these balls hanging off that tree well guess what you can get these things in all sorts of configurations you can get them in a semi-circle so you can get two of them put all the way around the tree you can get them in long six foot eight foot long strips you can get them in a little rectangle like this one right here it's only about two feet oh yeah they they come with all sorts of configurations and that's what we did we put ours around that christmas tree and along comes old cattle dog just like cattle dog does and go hey what the heck all right never mind leave the tree alone that was years ago. They're not around there anymore. I don't have any of these on my counters. Work like a champ. Again, a little 9-volt battery. It's all it is. A little 9-volt battery. Not plugged into any wall. Not creating any sort of super harm. Just a little static charge. Heck, kind of like probably what we used to do in the, with the little rodents in the laboratories back in the day. No big deal. Think about it. I'd rather my dog go, oh, geez, a little static charge. And that kind of bother me to a point to where I just don't think the chocolate is worth it. Versus having them killed because they consumed a the chocolate. Or like one of our dogs, they consumed a, an entire um, one of those little fire starter things. I even forget what they're even called, but that should have killed the dog dead in the door now. Consumed the whole thing. The thing that you'd use to start a fire with cheating. <laughs> you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Yeah, on a, on a cold night, consumed the whole darn thing. I can sit there and go on this all day long, the stories in, that I can tell about dogs getting up on counters. Okay, so to leave you with this thing here, first of all, I would just go with a scat mat. They're so easy. They're so inexpensive. You can buy them, buy them online like every darn thing else. Go ahead and get you a few of them. Uh, if you have cats, I know this is a dog video series, but if you happen to have a feline, oh my gosh, they are very curious. One of the only animals that will seek out those things that are not directly related to their survival. Here's what you do with them. Put the thing on the counter. Don't turn it on. I'm serious. Don't turn it on for about three days. Let them get up there because they'll investigate. They'll go, ooh, what is that? What is that? And they'll touch it and they'll smell it oh but at first i'm not so sure i'm not going to commit to anything here because i'm a cat yeah <laughs> that's why i leave them turned off for about three days if you have a really curious dog same thing leave it turned off them just think oh okay just another part of the counter just the counter no big deal yeah after day three turn it on now all of a sudden boom there we go counter bad it's real bad. And it's over. And now you don't have to worry about it. You can leave your dogs at home. It doesn't, don't have to worry about it. They're not going to get on your counter or on that piece of furniture that you don't want to have on. goes on and on. Just become creative. Use it as you wish. But if you need a little bit more incentive, other than me telling you, I owned a vet hospital for, for many, many, many years, and we treated lots of dogs, and we, didn't, we weren't able to save all the dogs, let me just show you a quick video right here. This is a video that belongs to a friend of mine. And here we go. This is his kitchen. This is a black and white film because it's a security camera. It's his security camera. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And there's his dog investigating what's on top of the stove. Yeah. Checking it out. Let me see if I can turn on a little volume here. There you go. Hear a little sound.
Can you hear that? I'm getting a little closer. That's the ticking of the gas. The dog had hopped up on the stove to investigate food that got left on the stove and accidentally ignited the gas stove. All right, so this goes on a little bit. You can see it starting to grow there. Let me move it a little closer. There's the flame. Why? Because there just happened to be a dish rag laying nearby as well. You got all the things of the fire triangle happening right here. You've got heat. You have fuel. You have oxygen. You're going to have a fire. And this thing continues to go on and on. And I'm just going to kind of fast forward it. As you can see here, look at it grow. And then, right about there, you see all the smoke. Half of his house burned down. Now, fortunately, his dog got away. Ran to the other half of the house that didn't burn down. But could have died from smoke inhalation. Someone else could have been home. He just wasn't home at that time. And the dog hopped up. Tell you what. Scat mats, what he uses now. That's for sure. Get that thing done right then and there. Uh, those of you that use remote training collars, you can use those too. But again, you have to be around to press the button. And therefore, you're going to have to be really sneaky about that. Maybe use FaceTime with a phone, some sort of security camera of your own that you can back out of the house and get away from the house, convince the dog that you're not there. This is a much simpler, much simpler. Electrified mat, that's all it is, plastic mat. Been around for years and years. Three different settings, low, medium, high. Take your pick, see what works for your dog. If low doesn't work, go to medium. Medium doesn't work, go to high. And I guarantee you, it will be done. So there you go, guys. Halloween's coming up. Don't take this chance. Don't take the chance. A lot of candy laying around here. Don't let your dog eat that candy. That's bad news. And make sure when you apply this, do it consistently. Once you get your dog once, once doesn't count, you got to leave that thing up there for probably a good solid two weeks. I would leave it up there, and I would even tempt the dog with a few things. Tempt them. Let's just see if they'll grab it. Something a little bit safer, like a piece of cheese or whatever. See if they'll grab that. Yeah. This is good learning. Cause and effect. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. And again, keep everybody safe. You stay safe. Keep your dog safe.